Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Wednesday night. It's hey, did you see this one? Hello, everybody. It's me. It's me. It's J A S O N. I'm never going to say that again. I'm sorry I did that. I'm just hyper and ready to go. I'm your host for tonight. And these are my beautiful co hosts here on Hey, Did You See This One? It's Steve. Hi. And Kaylin. Bonjour. Uh, we got a very special show for you this week. It's no different than any other week. Um, I'm just hip and I'm hop and uh, hip to the hip hop. And you don't stop the rocking. So, uh, <sighs> I have a quick just, question. Okay, uh, why don't you ask that question, then Steve, you answer him so I can get the levels. All right. <laughs> Steve, I don't know if you can answer it, but when Jason is doing the intro and then there's a little music break, can they see us? Should we be... Should no, we they cannot oh, see is us. It? Is it the logo or is it just him? It's the logo. It's just the logo, yeah. I could, I guess, pop it over from now on if you'd like, if you'd like to do no, a little no, dance. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. I just, I wasn't really sure if, uh, cause you're always like, let me do the thing. And I wasn't sure if, it, if, if we were the, like seen while I was doing it. Now, you know, <laughs> how, are the, right. how are the levels, how are the audio levels, but did that work? Was that a good audio test? <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think we sound good. So no, sound good all wonderful. Yes. Yes. All right. This is the show that you came to watch. Uh, three, two people, three people um a couple this, of people well this week on the show we're doing it the 1992 cult classic because i don't think for the amount of money it seemed like they put into this movie nobody has ever heard of it um, i know yeah i don't even know if it's at cult classic level <laughs> it's just like <laughs> cult level <laughs> uh so let i just i'll go first for the like our background because i want to on that note steve because i want to tell you guys why i wanted to do it and essentially I love John Ritter, of course, and I used to love the guy that plays Spike until he uh, unfortunately turned out to be a sex predator. Uh, yeah, he's he's a he's anyway. We'll no good. He forward. got canceled in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, they canceled yes. his ass. They canceled him. Um, but we'll just we'll just move past the fact that that dude's in this movie. It's uh, can somebody look his name up? Jeffrey Jones. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah got it. from from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He's the principal. He's, he in, a lot of Tim Burton. he's in a lot of Tim Burton movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Beetlejuice, yeah. Yeah, he's in Beetlejuice. He's a lot of shit from the late 80s, early 90s. Then Did you, you guys got... ever see The Pest with John Leguizamo? Say that name again? <laughs> John Leguizamo? Leguizamo. Oh, did I say it wrong? Shit. Linguiziamo is what it sounded like. You said. Linguiziamo. Hey. Linguiziamo. Spaghetti. Yo, John, if you're ever watching this, my apologies. Yeah, our <laughs> biggest fan is John Linguiziamo. <laughs> and our other fan is Luis Guzman. <laughs> Luis Guzmano. Luis Guazos, Luis Guazos. Um, but uh, I was a huge fan of John Ritter growing up. I completely forgot that they pay homage to him being on Three's Company, which I grew up on. Yeah. It's completely age inappropriate. Like that show was literally on in the 70s, and I was born in 1985. So I don't even know if it was still on when I was born. Yeah, it's but surprising that you watched Three as Company. I watched when he was in your childhood. Syndicated. Was, syndicated. Yeah, syndication was a different beast when I was a kid. And I had TBS. <laughs> Um, and they showed Three's Company, they showed I Love Lucy, they showed uh, Beverly Hillbillies, they showed Golden Girls. I think Golden Girls was on as I was growing up. I think, yeah, I think Golden Girls was our era. Golden Girls is the show. I was like, me, I was watching this with Danny earlier today, and when the Three's Company thing happened, Danny was like, what? And I'm like, I don't know for sure, but I think he was maybe on that show. He was three. He was the third company man. Yeah. He had to pretend to be a homosexual. It's like a fourth wall breaking joke, I suppose. But, this whole uh, shit is meta. There's a lot of meta jokes in this. It's almost like it's almost like a Deadpool level of meta. Yeah. Um but uh just on that note, it's funny that they did that gag because it, that show was really kind of ahead of its time where he had to pretend he was gay to live with two women because they weren't married. 
Um, yeah, the landlord wouldn't have it or something. Yeah, the landlord was like, you can't live with two women. And he's like, oh, I'm gay. I'm flaming. I'm out of the closet. And it was the 70s. And everybody thought that was a joke and hilarious. Um, so funny. But John Ritter <laughs> is a great physical comedian. He he's, he's very subdued in this, but you do see it come out quite frequently throughout the movie. And I remember when this movie came out, I was very young. I was like probably seven. So I would have seen it when I was eight because it usually took a, a year for a movie to come to the movie network. Right. Um, where, where I lived, Channel 31 was the movie network. And that's how I ended up seeing Weekend at Bernie's 2, that movie where the kid has the talking skateboard, just all these weird like sea level movies that, you know, were on the movie channel. Um, tickle your fancy. Exactly. Tickle my pickle. Nope. And... <laughs> And uh, so essentially, I saw this movie like a million times in a very short amount of time because they only ran movies for about, you know, four to six months. And then when I was in high school, we came on a trip to here to Toronto, where I live now. And uh, we went into like a movie shop back. To, I don't know. If, I think they had HMVs here then, but uh, it was just like a movie store. And I bought this movie on VHS and then much like uh, my stories about watching other movies a million times on VHS, hanging out, smoking pot with my friends. This was one mm. of those movies that was in circulation during the high school era. So I've Do probably... you still have it? No, no, no. I got rid of all my VHSs at some point. I think moving around in my 20s, every time I moved, a few things yeah. would get left behind, you know? Yeah, yeah. Till eventually I just had all I had was like my turbo graphic 16 in my NES and no games. Nice. But um yeah, so that I, I've probably seen this movie a hundred times, but I haven't seen Jeez. it in 20 years. 666 times. I've seen it 666 times, but I haven't <laughs> seen it. I haven't the last time I watched it, I was probably like when torrenting began, and I was like, oh, check that movie out when I was like. 19 or 20 so i haven't well okay i'm not that old i've seen it let's say let's say 17 years all right i think we can forgive you okay. for estimating <laughs> <I forgive. laughs> so i'll turn it over to you steve when uh what's your history with the movie stay tuned starring john ritter the long and rich history of about three hours because i watched <laughs> it today for the first time i had never even heard of this movie before um, a few of my friends had told me that it was on TV a lot when we were younger, but I, I didn't see it. <laughs> I never saw it on TV. Um, but yeah, I literally watched it for the first time. Finished the movie about an hour ago. So nice. pretty fresh. fresh in mind. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, how about you, Cage? How about you, Kaylin? How about you, Cage Man? I am uh, uh, pretty much in the same boat. Uh, I don't... I. I don't recall ever hearing about it. I don't even really recognize the cover. Like, you know, you go to like the Jumbo Video or or uh, Video Difference or, you know, Blockbuster, et cetera. When you go to a movie rental place anyway, whatever place is in your area, not anymore. Anyway, I digress. Um, the cover though, like, you know, you walk down the aisles, checking out what movie you want to do for the night. And the cover doesn't really stand out to me either for some reason. Uh, I don't like I find it odd that it doesn't have any kind of inkling in my memory whatsoever but so this was the first time I heard of it the first time I watched it the other day and I was uh, I was pleasantly um, uh, enjoyed I don't think that's the right word you enjoyed it unexpectedly yeah. um, well the thing that's funny about that is I thought Kaylin you would have seen this before I, I figured, but I, I think this is more a, a you movie than it is the Steve movie. But the point yeah. of this show is, um, hey, did you see this one? And I'm glad that I could bring a movie, you guys, because you gave us Benny and June, right? Which we had heard of, but like, I would never think it was that in a million years. Like I watching that movie, I was like, this is crazy. How And Steve, you gave me... Uh, big trouble in little china and that's another one where the whole time that's a movie I'm, that i was like actually shocked that you had never seen before i, I couldn't I believe it actually it's like gave, that movie seems like it was made for you as a person <laughs> I, I gave my dad shit in fact i was like how come you didn't how come you never and he was like i don't know i don't know what that movie is either 
and I was like, you, uh. so I, <laughs> and uh, so you introduced him to it now too. No, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it at Christmas time. But I did right. emancipate myself from him, so he's no longer my father. Uh. Uh, uh, another thing I wanted to add to my um, introduction part is it, 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 me and my friend Jake and Simon. We loved John Ritter because he, you know, fell over the coach. Did all this physical mm-hmm. comedy. When I say fall over the coach, on it was a very specific joke where on Three's Company, somebody would say something and he. <laughs> freak out and then fall backwards over the couch and it got me <laughs> every single time and that's his like trademark that he does it in this movie yeah, yeah. It's that, yeah. i was so confused like i was like what the f- why did he just fall over the couch like i didn't understand and i'm like oh it's a reference to something that i'm unfamiliar with now i get it <laughs> when he passed away i i did like a facebook post or a twitter post where i was like he's falling over the big couch in the sky <laughs> that's nice. how synonymous it was with him um but the other thing is is once once you once once i fast forward from 1992 which where i would have loved john ritter i would have seen uh his work you fast forward to uh 2000 right when i get this movie on vhs <clears throat> and now eugene levy is part of our like we love this actor because of american pie and if sctv was in syndication at that point on the comedy channel and we loved Eugene Levy. So the meld of these two in, in a movie playing off each other was great. Kalen, you don't have to put your goddamn hand up. After last week, I feel like I do need to put my hand up. No, last that that was a different circumstance. I'm in better spirits. I was having a rough go. You don't just all I ask is just yeah. if I if somebody else is talking, wait for a break like that. It's very hard. There's hardly any, any ever anyway. So thank you for answering my hand. Did you take a class trip to a movie store? Or was no. it just some of your friends from the class trip went to it or something? We walked down like Queen Street or Young Street. It's weird now because I live here. So I have these flashes of the Grand yeah. Line trip being in Toronto. But I know the yeah. city so well now that it's like, this doesn't make sense in my memory. Like yeah, ge- the geography is all weird. You're like, it's I thought broken. Queen Street was like, it's just chunks in your mind, right? You, you're like, yeah. the city is endless. And then you realize like, oh no, I could have walked from there to there. <laughs> we didn't yeah. need to take a bus. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Like I vividly remember going to the Dragon Mall in Chinatown on that trip. Yeah. And it's seeming so great because I never, I'm from fucking Halifax. There's no Chinatown in Halifax. There's really Chinese right. people in Halifax. Um, and walking, it seems so like, it seems so like different and new. And then we go into this crazy mall and all the stores are like tiny, like tiny shops. And it goes, it's like endless. Like there's the dragon mall and there's the other one across the street. That's <coughs> even, I don't know how it still exists. It's just like these vendors that are clearly fronts for things, you know, <laughs> like who goes into that mall? Um, yeah. I used what? to work there at Huron. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people in Chinatown. It's crazy. It's like um, little China. It's like a tiny China. So, no. for this one, I took too many notes. We could we could go through my notes sort of as the plot synopsis because I don't know. It, it's these movies that only one of us have seen. I find that it's better to just sort of go scene by scene almost. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. this movie does not have a plot, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the plot. <laughs> it has a plot. I'll, I'll give you Yeah, the they plot. get trapped in a TV and they have to survive for 24 hours. That's the plot. <laughs> yeah, thank you. The, the devil comes to... Uh, so Ned... So Ned Queasley, Is he the devil or does he work for the devil? He's like the devil's, like, underling. He's like... Yeah, he's a, Mephistopheles. The devil's boss. I think yeah. they say, where he's just like a... De- he's the devil of... De- you know, there's like a god for everything. You know, there's like oh, the yeah, yeah. This, god of water. God the devil of... Yeah, of yeah. He he's like uh, one of the seven sins almost. It seems like he's the like sloth. Ooh yeah yeah. He's Mephistopheles. Um, he's Mephist- his name is Slothfulies. Mephistopheles. He's uh, like we said, played up, by I guess? Jeffrey Jones. He's his name is Spike. Yeah, he the is- unfortunate reality of him being a shitty person in real life is you know whatever we he's don't have to talk about. Person it, in but, the movies uh, he plays. He's been in a lot of good movies, and he does play the role well. He always plays a dickhead, yeah. (laughs) Big and imposing brute character who's smart. Yeah. Is he a German? I don't think so. He has a very thick American accent, if that's an accent and can be thick. Um, Unless you talk like this, you're from downtown. He also has orange hair, so. 
well, yes. me feel like maybe he's from the the hills <laughs> the hills the, the hills that have eyes in them um, yeah the, the hills, hills that are alive fire. with the sound of uh, he also in this movie has the coolest fucking thing that i think i've seen yes. in a long time <laughs> i love I wanted... that little wrist uh, mounted remote control that comes out and spins and then he grabs oh, yeah. it it's so good that is uh, my probably my favorite part of the movie. Me in too. fact, that little piece of ingenuity made it makes me... it more interesting. They didn't have to do that. He could just pull the remote out it's of his true. pocket, but they it... decided to give him a fancy way to have it come in, in and out of his hand. Like really, it reminded really cool me of way. the the DIY practical effects in like Ghostbusters, and the opening right. scene in this movie actually reminded me of a lot of Ghostbusters. And I cut the the whole movie. It's definitely a Ghostbusters uh, smash cut to the title. Yeah, the whole movie remind kind me of... of Superman. The intro credits remind me of Superman. Yeah, yeah that's a good one too. Because they, yeah, because they're coming at you and it's just a black background. And the music, the music kind of, I'm not sure, like probably not the exact same, but it kind of sounded familiar. Well, I wanted it's got to a look... Horner vibe to a James Horner vibe. He's got I a lot of to look that up because it did sound very specific. Yeah, maybe like the same. Um, uh, <clears throat> Well, that's the thing, right? A lot of these types of movies, you know, like John Williams, for example, as like the most, you know, commonly known composer, you know, he works with very specific directors yeah. and then whoever composed the music for this probably did a lot of movies that had a similar vibe. <laughs> that's why there's yeah. always kind of like this like jingly music playing when they're like walking down the hallways and stuff. Yes, that uh, I'm just looking up who composed this. Um but this this whole movie sort of has a vibe of like Ghostbusters practical effects mixed mm -hmm. with um, mixed with like the meta of something like a Deadpool mixed mm -hmm. with the um, the episodes of Rick and Morty that are like intergalactic TV or or what that's what it was called right interdimensional television. interdimensional television yeah. and uh, and then there was something there was another there was another. Uh, music composed by Bruce Broughton, who I don't know, <laughs> I yeah, don't know that guy. Did that person probably Superman. done a ton of stuff though. No, James Horner did Superman, I think, didn't he? He did Mon the Monster Squad. He did Jag. <laughs> Wait, no, John Williams nope. did Superman. <laughs> yeah, John Williams did Superman. Sorry, I, uh, I should have chimed. What's his name? Brian Butts. <laughs> Ryan Butts. Oh, this guy's worked on the Orville. How is Bruce Bro B R O U G H T O N? And he's still working. He's doing the Orville right now. So he's yep. like, oh, there's, okay. Like there's a part in this where they're on the bridge of like t Star Trek TNG, and it's the music yeah. is like spot on. Like the music is perfect. So this guy must do. He must specialize in doing like pastiche uh, orchestra symphony music for different things oh he he did a bit in fantasia 2000 he did a bug's life he did tiny tunes night ghoulery tv movie hey, oh he's gotta eat he was the composer for a bunch of the dinosaurs tv show mm -hmm. interesting tiny tune adventures all of it or 116 episodes of it interesting so this guy's done a lot of uh, a lot of shit. Got some work under his belt. Yeah, I can't believe he does. Yeah, the that's like one thing that I'm not overly familiar with in like the movie world is composers. Like I know the heavy hitters that everybody knows, like Danny Elfman and um, John Williams and James Horner. But James Horner did Alien. That's why it's in my brain. Um, but yeah. on Zimmer. Is it Zimmerman? On, on Zimmer, Zimmer, and then there's um, Michael Giacchino, I believe his name is, who's kind of like the new John Williams. The guy that's like... Oh, yeah, that guy has a crazy name that's hard to remember. It's not a crazy name, it's just not a... <laughs> I think he's, yeah, he's got some Scan Scandinavian... Yeah, his name's name. like Egan, I think, or something like that, his first name. I don't know his last name. Though. That guy rules. He did the theme for the Book of Boba as well, and I didn't yeah. like that song at first, but toward, like, as the, the song evolves as the show goes on, and by the end of it, it's just going, Boba Fett, Boba Fett. Oh, yeah, the last one, I was like, are they just saying Boba Fett now? Yeah. <laughs> Weird. The one time they add lyrics to a Star Wars theme and they're just ye yelling the character's name over and over again. 
strange. Well, except for Spider Man, I guess. Um, so right, essentially, Spider Man movie... is not a Star Wars thing. <laughs> I'm talking about in Star oh, Wars, specifically Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. So the movie, this movie, kind of starts off with like a whatever backstory about the family. Uh, John Ritter, uh... one doorbell. She yelled at him after one doorbell ring. Oh yeah, that wife, the the first family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she was not a nice person. I did the not like her. Bombs. But Get I also that's one of my complaints about the movie is that every female character in this movie is mean, like so mean, all of I'm them, every girl. single one. Oh, you know, you're girl. right. The sister is mean. The mom is mean. That lady at the beginning is mean, and those are the only three. <laughs> the, I mean, uh... the mom is slightly rightfully so because he's kind of ignoring her for TV. That's true. I, of course, but she's still being mean to him the rest of the movie. Like he yeah. is trying to help and get them out of trouble, and she's still being super mean to him all the time. The whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm going, they could remake this movie now with some couple where the dude just plays video games the whole time and they get sucked into a video game. And then I was like, wait, they Ooh. kind of just did that, but it's Juman, the new Jumanji. 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 <laughs> Those movies are or good, man. I like the new Jumanji part. movies. They're pretty fun. I'll probably watch them. <laughs> they, they actually are pretty good. They they yeah. they are. I vouch for them. I like Dwayne the Rock Johnson and Jack the Black Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Black. Yeah. Kevin Hart's also good in those movies. And uh, what's her name? The what's her name? Uh, Nebula. <laughs> Nebula. But what's her real name? Shern <laughs> Shern and Sharnder. Shern and Sharnin. Yeah, that's her name. <laughs> no, that's uh, the girl from Lady Bird. <laughs> she's she's very funny in those movies as well. She's got a she's got a good physical comedy points yeah from me you only see, as nebula you only see her acting like a like cold hard oh yeah she's like the uh, you. fish out of water humor or like the just super straight that it's funny kind of thing nice. yeah um and then they also include the the, the the daughter who is like the worst character in any movie i've ever heard seen recently yes she I was hated awful. her so much her acting was bad and everything she said was cringe and it was amplified by the fact she was a pretty bad actor but that actor i do feel like i recognize from heather? other stuff heather uh, mccomb or I, something? Heather I don't McComb. know who she was i was like i don't know who you are but you're not you're not doing it for me here she's you on ray donovan chill. She's on Ray Donovan. She so you know was... how when he's when the kid has his little narration at the beginning and he he talks about how his his dad has a suck job. Yeah. <laughs> me and me and Danny kept saying suck job the whole time we were watching it, and every time that girl came on screen, I was like, this girl's being a real suck job right real now, man. <laughs> I don't like her. Right? Why do they call blowjobs blowjobs? Why don't they call them? What? No one was talking about blowjobs. Well, no, I'm talking about it job. now because suck job is what it should be called. Oh my God, Kalen. I think because when the blow this is a topic was, for a different podcast. I think when the blowjob was invented, they didn't know what they were doing, and they were like, yeah. "Is that doing anything for?" <laughs> I'm blowing on it, just like the description would just like the infer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but essentially, uh, that's what happens. They suck job each other off. Nope. Uh, <laughs> That was an example of me saying words without knowing where I was going, so I just had to end it and go back to my notes. Anyway, but yeah, the, the daughter was a real suck job. But the, they framed <laughs> the kid at the very beginning as this like super genius. Did you guys think it was the? Did you guys think it was a young Matt Damon? Like, I, when I didn't first... think it was, oh. <laughs> but I kept thinking this kid looks like a young Matt Damon to the point. Sometimes from certain angles, I was yeah. like, should I look this up? No, that's definitely not him. He's not age yeah. appropriate. I was like, enough. "How old is this movie? Is that young Matt Damon?" <laughs> that kid is is a, only a couple years older than us, and Matt Damon is like probably almost fifty now, right? So I yeah, no, it's definitely not him. Yeah, the age makes sense, but he, it does look it, it did look like it. Um, but the the funny thing is, is like the mom is a ad executive, and the dad has a suck job, like you said. He deliver. It's the it's the worst like do traveling salesmen even exist in this context anymore with the internet no. are there still like traveling like door to door, door, to door like i'm gonna sell no. you a vacuum the closest cleaner. thing would Avon? be would be like in uh the office where uh what's his name packer or timothy oliphant's character where it's like you're representing a company and you go That's... around and you do business it's not you don't bring stuff with you though That's we have happen anymore yeah we have a traveling tech that is always on the road at our company yeah. He's, a, he's an it guy and he's he lives on the road he's a free he's, he's a free bird um nice. just like packer he's nothing like packer he's much better than packer Talk, not a horrible racist homophobic horrible. sexist no <laughs> fat shames people um 
I think I'd like to travel for work. I feel like that'd be fun. At least for a bit anyway. I think you would get over it pretty pretty fast. And you did used to travel for work. You were a uh, delivery man. And it was awesome. I fucking drove and listened to music. I sit still and listen to music and it's like the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere. I hate driving so much that that sounds like torture to me. No oh man, it was so great free. music I'm playing. Uh, yeah, I'm a road rager. I'm one of those classic scream at every everyone around fucking, me constantly fucking, all the time. Fucking, yeah. fucking, <laughs> oh, fuck. Is this guy going? <laughs> also, I didn't have to worry about walkouts like like regular servers would have to kind of thing. That's true. And I, I'll, I, whatever, you worked at Boston Pizza. Um, they did walkouts kind of tr- like people skipping out on their bill. Yeah, yeah. They, they did treat the delivery drivers are like an extension of the serving staff, as I recall where you had the same kind of tip boat structure. You wore like a, almost the same All suit black. that they wore. Yeah. <clears throat> didn't you have an emblem? Like, didn't you have a Boston pizza? Yeah, I had emblem? a name tag. Yeah, a little yeah. Boston pizza name tag. You had to, you know, do cutlery when it was slow. And... I wasn't allowed to wear my hat backwards. It had to be forwards if I was wearing my hat. Um, I would do, I, I like, I, I work various positions or whatever, so to speak, of like, uh, like at Boston Pizza, like when I wasn't doing delivery, I would bust tables. I would hop in scullery or in skull or whatever. I would do. Um, That's dishwasher. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I've worked at a what, restaurant. And I didn't know what that was. That's the, that's where the Aquatech works. We also had to call the dishwasher the Aquatech. Aquatech. Yeah. Awesome. What's the what's the in between person called again? Uh, between the kitchen and the front of house. The uh, oh my god. I'm trying to remember. Uh, fucking. Expediter, expediter yeah the expediter yeah. at the pass yeah that i did that like i did I, I would get orders i would like or like uh like if we needed supplies or whatever like i'd go and get supplies and check even though it was like a, it was it was a shitty fast food place essentially like a shitty pizza place it was run the kitchen was run like a kitchen so we didn't have like sous chef you know chef du cuisine and that but we did use a lot of the terms yeah and the we person, had a solid team we had a like solid during team. our era yeah we used to get fucking wrecked. Like it made me a bad person working there. <laughs> wow. Anyway, um, don't work in kitchens, kids. It'll mess your life up. So uh, the kid has this like superhuman ability to just like glue fucking computers together and like take. Yeah, they don't really explain it other than they're just yeah. like, he's good at stuff. And you're like, he, all right, I'll believe it if you're telling feas- me to, movie. I don't know how feasible it is to do this in reality. Um, but Hijack everyone's internet, TV in the neighborhood. But like yeah, super villain everybody's TV like you yeah. see in, in Batman, you know? Oh yeah, when it takes over the, yeah. He does that. So the broadcast. Also very weird thing to be selling. Yeah. <laughs> VHS copies of your sister making out with her boyfriend. <laughs> <It's kind> of, <laughs> That's a black male Some situation. sort of twisted pervert. He, he, also, he can we all agree his favorite color was green? Like... <laughs> Was he wearing a lot of green? So much green. His hat was green. His bike was like a lime green or whatever. His jacket was like an army green. So much green. I wonder if there's a specific reason for this. Maybe green was like more eye-catching at the time or something. Could be. Green. I learned from Fargo that humans, okay, so humans apparently can see more um, shades of green than any other mammal because we had to we lived in the jungles uh, and had to be able to see our predators. I learned that from Billy Bob Thornton on the television program, Fargo. Fargo. I think uh, this has nothing to do with that. Did you also know I that there are that, certain humans who can see far more shades of green than others? Cro-Magnon man? There was, there was a guy. Colorblind his, people? His, his, yeah, there's also people that can see less shades of anything. <laughs> it's called being colorblind. Um, <clears throat> but there, there was this show, it was about illegal marijuana fields, and they had this one specific guy that would go and sit on, in a helicopter, and he would look out over large swashes of forests. And because, oh, nice. he, had the, because he had yeah. the ability to see more shades of green, he could spot marijuana fields that would be otherwise invisible from that altitude. Right. That's cool. It's pretty cool. Or like in the the <clears throat> middle of a giant cornfield that if you flew over, you wouldn't be able to see the weed distinguished yeah. from the corn. There's a test you can take to see if you're like at the higher end. I'm above average in the green seeing ability, which is kind of cool. It was kind of a nice, cool thing to know, learn about myself. <laughs> but I'm not, not, like, I'm not like a super version of it, though. Uh, you can probably find it on the internet, yeah. I think you're the I opposite of colorblind. You're color 
extra colors. Crazed. The color, yeah. Deep color color enhanced. Color amplified. Um, okay, so did you guys notice the scene where he's like, where John Ritter is like kicking his boxes around and he goes back to his car? And they show a shot of like the city. There's a building that looks like the CN Tower. It wasn't the CN Tower, but I don't know what the fuck it is because this city or this movie was filmed in. Um, Does Vancouver. it take place in Seattle? Nope. It takes it's it's filmed in Vancouver, and some stuff is shot in Arizona. I think they're supposed to be in the states, but no, I don't think they ever really say where they are. Right. It it could be that they're supposed to be in Seattle, but uh, I just thought that was strange, so I looked it up. And I watched this movie in 1080p and I thought it looked pretty good. So I don't know if you guys, I remember watching this movie like on VHS or like on TV when I was a kid. And I was like, wow, this movie doesn't look great. It looks like an old shitty movie you see on TV. Like the, the set for the Friday night movie. Is that not the Seattle Space Needle? I like went to the scene in the movie. I have it right here. <laughs> oh, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe they were close. Is Vancouver that close to Seattle? Yeah. Uh, or no yeah 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 no, I no, it's, I it's not this BC, it's not the space needle no it's not when i lived in uh, bc the my boss was a big fan of the seattle seahawks okay you lived in bc yeah for a little bit like modern era like in your 20s like 10 year or uh 10 15 15 years ago wow like oh right before boston pizza yeah right on um the other movie that i that this reminded me of that crossed with those other movies is uhf which is obvious because it's a movie about a tv station where they lampoon other shows this one weirdly enough weird al didn't a lot of the shows were just sort of like archetypal you know but this Mm -hmm. actually parodied straight up shows it's true yeah, yeah, there's a couple that, that got me good, like I giggled at, but there are so many like low hanging fruit garbage jokes that I was Different like, this strokes. is just get out of here. <laughs> I I listed them as I went, so I'll say them as nice. they come up. Yeah, okay, I wrote nice. all I wrote all of them down. Um, uh, the parents are having problems. Um, Roy is obsessed with the TV. I like the they show his TV, and this is something that I remember from this era did you guys uh have the tv guides i had subscriptions or i would buy the tv guide constantly i would my dad had a subscription to it so it was it was just in the house always sent to the home yeah <clears throat> and then we got the uh the channel eight or whatever um that's what it was in halifax uh, tv guide channel yeah. tv guide channel well it was something it was it wasn't called the tv guide channel and one day it suddenly was called tv guide yeah i assume that they like bought all of them oh my god did i forget to plug my fucking computer in <laughs> say some words we can still it. see you the uh, i'm still trying to figure out what the tower is i'm like going through all the towers in the world right now like what tower is this i think it's i think it's seattle it's not the seattle space needle i looked it up oh okay my bad yeah um it's a little stunted it's kind of weird looking it, it looks like a kind of a crappy tower <laughs> like what is it? maybe they knocked it down wherever it was um I yeah. had an inappropriate giggle close to the beginning when the kid is talking about some long lines of when I think about my dad, there's a few few names that come to mind. Bill Cosby. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one didn't age well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at this era, he was like America's dad. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now he's America's shame. <laughs> it, it's funny too, because there's still people that d- like don't really register that he did all that horrible shit and will still cite him. So now it's sort of like a generation of people have to die with his horrible atrocities to yeah. so people can just forget about him at all and not say his name. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, anyway, uh, the, the sort of like, like the like spike in this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I wanted to mention, though, that he has the TV guide like taped to his TV with a bunch of like things like scrawled on it like things yeah. circled and like i've noticed one underline and it says watch this I-, I thought that was a nice touch because like yeah they can show roy being obsessed with television but like this guy is quoting everything i do understand that there was significantly less tv and movies in 1990 we should get him on our show we should get john ritter on our show no roy nabel or nabel roy nabel john yeah. ritter's been dead for like 
a decade, but Roy Nabel's probably out there somewhere. Exactly. Also dead. Um, <laughs> he watched, he fenced himself to death. Um, so yeah, the devil shows up or Spike shows up, knows all about his uh, obsession with TV. I was thinking about, I know how we like to think about the parameters of the universe. And I was thinking that there's there's got to be something similar to, um, like he can sense, like Vecna in Stranger Things, he, he's able mm-hmm. to sense people's, like what their innermost desires are but it also holds found the tower what tower is oh nice it's called shaw tower and it's in vancouver uh it is it has 41 floors it's 489 feet tall wait no i'm wrong hold on you're wrong about the facts or you're wrong about the tower? it's called it's called the uh the mnp tower we got a we got a regular tower sleuth on the show tonight that's right folks Stay tuned, and you'll learn something. Not much, though. Shit, no, it's not. Hold on. I, I, I found a picture of it. I, I confirmed the picture, but it's like, there's it's a list of all these other things, too. And I'm like, which tower is it? Quick, somebody make a cum joke. We're, we're too educational. And now for a word from our sponsor. Uh, cum. Yeah, yeah, your toes. Toes. The yeah. Napa Crapper 9000. Never oh, leave your chair yeah. again. Real talk, maybe not now. But when I was a kid, and also when Bart, when Homer buys that uh, toilet chair, out of my way, I gotta, out of my way, I gotta poop is one of the funniest shits ever. But uh, <laughs> I kind of wanted like a TV that you could, but then it's like, how do you clean something like that? I think that's the joke. Uh, <laughs> but a TV with like a fridge built in was something I always wanted. A co- yeah, cooler or whatever. Yeah. Um. And or like a chair, like a lazy boy, but the TV is on a swivel. I think they had those at the old bus stations. Yeah. Yeah. I remember those. At the airport, they have little like internet booths. Is there yeah. is there a plug? It's called the Harbor Center. Oh, it's Ooh, the Harbor Center. It. Isn't that yeah. where the isn't that where like somebody plays when the hockey teams play? Um, the Harbor Center was built in 1977. It's 21 floors tall, 481 feet high. Fun fact: Harbor Center is one of the city's most recognizable buildings for its 360-degree lookout tower atop the building. The building itself is 21 floors in total. However, including the lookout tower, its true height is closer to 44 floors. This lookout to- tower serves as a tourist attraction and was officially opened by Neil Armstrong in 1977. Wow! So he's canceled too. Why is he canceled? Oh, that's right. No, I'm thinking of the other guy. Buzz Aldrin? No, no, no. Who's the guy that drives? Who, who's the guy that does the bicycles? Oh. Oh, Lance, uh, Lance, Lance Armstrong. Armstrong. He's not canceled. Yeah. He just cheated. <laughs> yeah. But he, he survived cancer, so like it's okay, I guess? No. Uh, he just didn't did steroids. He... Whatever. Yeah, it's whatever. It's, just a, so it's a little different than uh, the, you know, you know, Bill Cosby or... Uh... Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey Jones's, uh, you know, secret room, um, which is a state, a one man play I'm working on. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the devil knows everything about him. He offers Roy Nabel a television that has 666 channels from all over the world, I guess. Um, and then Roy's like, well, my wife just yelled at me four minutes ago about how much television I watch, so I probably can't do this. Also, I can't afford it. And he's like, well, what if I give you a free trial? And he's like, sign me the fuck up, because I need 666 <laughs> channels in my veins. I can easily explain this to my wife. She will definitely love the fact. She definitely didn't just throw a trophy through my TV. Um, Good throw, by the way. She whipped it through the TV, and then he was he got a smaller TV. I think the TV <laughs> was earlier in the movie. Uh, yeah, his little like portable one of those television, kitchen, one of those kitchen TVs or whatever. You know how. Like, also, she like softball hooked that trophy into the <laughs> TV, yeah. and then the I TV don't... exploded. Did, did anyone catch what type of trophy it was? Uh, was it I, fencing? I assumed bowling. It could have been. Fe- oh, maybe it was fencing because that is a. That's what he used to do. Yeah. Is, is Steve looking it up, or is he still looking at towers? It looks like he's looking it up, but I don't know. <laughs> looking it up, bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> the trivia man. Um. Also, was it her fault they got sucked in? Um, I mean, it's his fault for accepting the television. But yeah, he, but then she hit like she hit the thing, which made it react and suck him in. Yeah, it, she hit it and it fizz fuzzed. He's like, oh, I gotta go adjust the satellite now, which is stupid because even in during that era, you could adjust. There was my uncle had a giant satellite dish. <laughs> And he yeah. had this hilarious, like, giant remote control with a, a comically large dial. Like a tablet? No, but it was, like, analog. And it had oh, a, okay, yeah. It had a comically... No, but, like, tablet size, I mean? Yeah, but, like, bigger. Like, control deck size. There's the fucking thing. Oh, this big. Gotcha. And it had a... It had a the fencing trophy. It is a... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. It had a comically large dial on it that you could go and you look out at the window and see the fucking thing move. Oh, sweet. Yeah, when yeah. I was a kid, we had a, co- a cottage in uh, Bob Cajun and our neighbor had one of those big ass satellites and it was, it was too big. Like it was <laughs> dangerously big if it got caught in a windstorm or something that could destroy an entire home. Especially for the amount of channels you actually get. Like, and they're only repeated. They're, there's, you know what I mean? It's well, like a hundred channels repeated yeah, six times. That's true, but like there were still, you you still could get a shit ton of channels from like all over the place. Like a lot of affiliates showing different stuff. Like it is like it is now when you go through satellite and it's, there's it is repeating. But the thing that was cool was like you could find like so many like weird in between channels that were like local um like local tv you can also yeah, like find local to specific cities and stuff like just weird stuff yeah but what was dumb what was extremely dumb is each you you like had you switched over to like a new satellite like like you you know that Position. was digital but then yeah. you had to like almost like the radio you had to kind of like move the satellite back and forth to like tune the picture get the signal yeah get the signal and um that was definitely my first exposure to pornography but they didn't like they didn't like pay for any of the channels so it was like the meme about like no like seeing like fuzzy porn Uh, oh when you're way too young scrambled pornography yeah they they were also the first they my uh my uncle's a real like bleeding edge technology dude or he was back then and he had the internet before like anybody ever in like 1993 he like had like not just like the shitty bbs like web like forums internet that was just mm. he had like the full you go to www.whatever.com and i immediately went to www.sex.com and i immediately the next day was my dad was like did you go to um www.sex.com and i was like no and he was like <laughs> well they definitely didn't go there also w- was your cousin with you was she looking at it too and i was like no and she's like he's like yeah you guys definitely definitely did that you weirdos um i didn't see anything though because that website didn't have there was no it was internet 1.0 it was it wasn't a real website yet not really like i didn't (laughs) see i don't recall seeing anything so it just said sex.com and like hearts and like under construction (laughs) under construction (laughs) under construction uh yeah so i also like the cgi in this movie weirdly not bad because it was yep. used very sparingly. Yeah, the wires when they're when it's they're going in was really really cool effect. It was just like simple and I mean you could argue that it's bad, but I think it looked good for what they were trying to accomplish. I, liked I thought it. I thought two moments like when the ground opens up and he goes back to hell. Looked yeah, that didn't look yeah. too bad either. And when the thing melted at the end, when the satellite dish like melts and just like absorbs into the earth again, I thought it it looked like you know crappy early '90s CGI, but <laughs> It, it was also this. small it and it like it in the dark and they were able to hide it. Yeah, it was yeah. wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't like, you know, last last week with small soldiers where some stuff looked excellent because they put money into it and some stuff just looked bad. Like season one of reboot. <laughs> but season that's, one a, of, that's a slight against reboot. That's true. Yeah, and that, reboot looked better than that. Yeah. That's that's true. And that show um that show had it was stylized and was inside a computer so it made sense 
yeah. and it had interesting characters on like small yeah. soldiers <laughs> no small soldiers was just uh tommy lee jones yelling into a microphone and then cutting it up to i assume he yelled one stream of consciousness that was about 10 minutes long and they just cut it up and <clears> used <throat> it right um i See, yeah you, i don't, I don't wanna, you what do you need said, to say Kalen? is it about this it. movie or is all small soldiers again i think we are, we all talked well, enough about small soldiers last week aside from our viewers commenting while we're uh streaming or going live or whatever can they also message us on here or should we let them know about the instagram page and message us there if they want to uh so for example maybe they want to there's some that they would like to see they'd like to see us do um you can message us on here Anywhere. if you follow us on twitch you can message us on instagram you can call my phone number because it's you know the people is it on that to... thing right there is your phone no, number no. on there? <laughs> you no. the joke the joke there is that the people that watch this know us yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i used to say that all the time on blossom buddies and i didn't get a single call so we'll see what happens um <laughs> The first reference that comes up to an, a TV or movie parody is a great mashup. Do you guys remember what it was? Yes, the, it was, what, Mary, the man it was, and the baby? was Three Men and Rosemary's Baby. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Um, I love Three Men and a Baby, and I love that was Rosemary's a movie, right? Baby. Three Men and a Baby is where it's like Tom Selleck and Woody They're both Harrelson movies. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, they mashed up two movies to make another movie about the a dude. possessed demon baby. They got three Ted Danson. Oh, no. It's Ted <laughs> Danson, Tom Selleck, and some uh, other guy. The guy from <laughs> Police Academy. Steve I've never, oh, seen, yeah. I've never seen Three Men and a Baby. Three so Men and a Little Lady. Three Men and a Baby. Is that the sequel? The follow up several years later. Maybe it was Ted Danson. Maybe it was Ted Danson, Tom Selleck. If only there were. If only we had access to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a Three Men and a Baby TV show. Like, yeah, it's that, Tom Selleck, Ted Danson, and Steve Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg. I Is think that, they that made, guy? That's the who makes Steve Gutenberg a star? We do. It's two Simpsons references in one episode. If we are doing a show about 1992. It's um, true. He's he was in a lot of stuff back in the nineties and eighties. Uh, he looks like a he looks like a little happy elf man. Yeah, yeah, happy. He's just happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you for putting me in something. Yeah. If it wasn't for those fucking, if it wasn't for them making eight of those police academy things, I wouldn't even have a career. Um. Well, he was in. Uh, he was in a couple things. He was in what, Kalen? He's been in lots of uh, stuff. I, I just don't know any of the was top of my head. Parent Trap? What? Sorry, say again? Uh, Parent Trap. I think he was in Parent Trap. Oh, is he in the Parent Trap? I think. Like the, like the 80s one? There, I can't OG? remember which one because I think there's like two or three or something. Well, there's the, the one with, trap, with Lindsay Lohan or honey, the one with shrunk the ourselves. Olsen. And then there's Pardon? the one with the... Is it he, was, he was definitely not in the Parent Trap. Okay. Two. <laughs> What's the one with the Olsen twins? That <laughs> is Freaky Friday. Nope, that's the one. Nope, that's the one with Jennifer. That's the one. With like when they're Curtis detectives, or, or like I don't know. Or the one where they like pizza. P i z z a. I might be. It might not be Parent Trap, but it's the one where there's twins that don't know they're twins, and then they get crisscrossed. That's not the parent trap. The parent trap. Listen, is he's the... been in 103 things. So <laughs> the parent trap is the thing where the kids get their parents back together by locking them in a room. What am I? What's the title that I'm trying to think of? That two you're probably company? thinking. No. Of, you're probably thinking of that movie where Lindsay Lohan like meets. Lindsay her Lohan double, was the newer she version. She meets her double. It's and Freaky like... Friday. No, no, no. Oh, no. the Lindsay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then it's like she plays like twins, but she's not actually a twin. She's like swaps with like her british version of herself or something the yeah. prince and the pauper and also coming that's the to story america. that it's based on but I, it's not called that i don't remember what the movie's called but... coming to america there was oh, yes. there was a olsen twins version and then there was a Lindsay lohan like re reboot or something Ugh. so there's a prank do you guys remember the the prank show it was that's the next thing they show yeah oh um, um... <laughs> You can't win. Is it called You Can't Win? No. 
It's no. called like sadistic hidden camera or something like that. Yeah, sadistic hidden. hidden oh, videos. right, that one. Right. right. <laughs> but essentially, we just get a shot of like a dude uh, from across the street filming a cop go up to a woman's house and be like, <laughs> "I'm sorry, um, like your fa- your husband, your husband's dead. Who's gonna make it home? What's and happened like, oh. to my Steven? And then he's like, "Ah, you're on sadistic hidden video. Hey, you see? Look over there. there. Do you see that yeah. van? <laughs> and then she's psyched that she's on it. <laughs> yeah, she's pumped. Um, okay, so yeah, Roy goes to adjust the dish, and they have a fight, and they get sucked in. And the first show they're on is a game show, and the scene, the first shot that they show of the like guy Smiley, like uh, like host of him yeah. just being like, the golden tooth that is yeah. burned into my brain forever. Well, that I moment, mean, it, it's pretty impactful. They start so close to his mouth, so it's just <laughs> like uncomfortable. That moment and the very end. <laughs> Ugh, like a 90s music video are you puff daddy um you poof the magic dragon I, whoa whoa that was about <laughs> weed um that moment and the moment towards the end when they're in the music the salt and pepper music video are burned into my head forever um i'll never forget that music never video was it. where i was like i gotta go to the bathroom and <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't watch this. It's making me uncomfortable. And some of the products in this that they're uh, that they can win are the Napa Crapper Nine Thousand, which we talked about already, uh, and Encyclopedia Satanica, which is just a great play on words. Yeah, that was a that was an all right one. But that's that also goes along the lines of like low hanging fruit. A lot of this movie is just like the easy joke. You know, there's not really much to a lot of them, but there's a few that got me going. Who I I like that the show was called You Can't Win. Yeah, <laughs> you can't win, right? <laughs> Who is this movie for? It's kind of I was weird, wondering right? that myself. Like it's not really a kids movie. Yeah. But it's not it's like too childish for adults. It's like teenagers. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Like I 13 think, year olds maybe. Yeah. I think like I think it's like a uh in the same age group of like there's no swearing. I was gonna say American Pie, but American Pie is clearly in a, a movie for 18 year olds about yeah, yeah. a couple older of years teens. Before. Yeah, yeah. But there is a there is a genre of movie that is for like, yeah, it's know, like middle school 15, kids. 15 year olds. Right? I think it's that, but I I have a theory that I noticed because there are a couple blatantly eighty yard eighty yard over moments. Yeah. yeah, like for instance, there's the the beer that the kid drinks. Beer for kids. Yeah. Beer for kids. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, give me another the, one, woman. Get back or, in the uh, kitchen, woman. And you can clearly see him. He says, bitch. "Get me another one, babe." But yeah, he yeah. says, "Bitch." Yeah. Also, babe, that kid yeah. is the kid from Needful Things, a movie similar to this. Oh, movie. Um, ah, we did that movie. We did. We that. did. We covered it right here on. Hey, did you see this one? I was like, this kid looks really familiar. And then I was like, oh yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute. He just said, "Bitch," but it came out as "Babe." <laughs> Am I watching this on the YTV? <laughs> so I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm wondering if the VHS version that I had. He said, "Babe," and the TMN version from the early nineties. No, what it probably bitch. was was they put it to a ratings board, and then that moment of a child calling his mom a bitch probably upped the rating, and then they probably went back and changed it to lower the rating. Yeah, yeah that's okay. probably what happened too. That's a good call. Um, but I think there, yeah, I think there was a time when this movie could have been. They could have pushed a lot of things that they didn't. There wasn't a, nearly enough because they say "bitch" in the movie earlier, right? Like, remember when she calls the wrestler a bitch, and then she goes, "I'm just kidding. You're probably not a bitch." <laughs> that was very funny. That was pretty funny, yeah. So now we go. But to... that's an adult saying it, not a kid. That's true. That's, that's what I mean. Point. That's why the child saying it is yeah. probably what bumped the rating. Yeah, because this was probably PG-13 or yeah. PG. There was no PG-13 in '92 yet. Um, so we now I we think... go to like. A subplot PG in that they they expanded. I know, they, I know the story, and then PG thirteen. Yeah, they expanded the ratings in like the mid nineties and made oh, more ratings. July first, nineteen eighty four, is the first PG rate PG thirteen movie. Ooh. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Don't just make up facts. You got to know them for sure. Okay, <laughs> my wife hates it when I do that. Um. Okay, fair enough. I thought PG thirteen. I thought they changed the rating. No, the reason I question it is because I know that um, Indiana Jones was they created the PG thirteen specifically for that series because they wanted to have a little bit more gore, like some slight blood, have him bleeding and not just like getting punched and nothing happening, him shooting people. 
but it was it kept getting an R rating. So they're like, let's try and create a new rating system for movies that are like this, where it's like clearly fun and fantasy for kids, right. but a little bit more edgy than like a Disney movie or something, right? Uh, when did the Canadian MPA change though? Um, I don't know. Ooh, that's a good. Because that might turn be what I'm tables. thinking of. Turn the tables on him, Jay. Well, I'm, not, I'm not trying to turn the tables. Yeah, oh, we're actually, not fighting about this. We're actually, just this, I want to make sure that we're being accurate. This goes against even what I'm saying because PG-13 apparently doesn't exist in Canada. It goes... What? Yeah, I'm looking at the oh, yeah, NPA it's 14A. site. It's 14A. When did that start? I don't know. Uh, sexuality suggestive scenes. No, no. What? When, <laughs> when, when did it start? I was when? saying the thing I was reading at that moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh that's interesting because i've always seen 14a and i think that that rating system where 14a got introduced that happened in the 90s i'm not going to look it up i'm just going to i'm just going to double down on just saying things okay. as is tradition <laughs> i'm just going to make stuff up and hope that nobody looks it up <laughs> yeah that's my mo um no it's yeah it's fine this is not even really that important of information but uh yeah it's like 14a 18a and then r which is like never happens but i remember in high school kill bill volume one was rated r and i tried rated so hard r. to see that goddamn movie and i never got to see it in theaters rated r. is n17 higher than r nc17 yeah that's like basically one step down from pornography that's like extremely gory movies that don't get released in theaters with yeah. full penetration i think that the evil dead movie the first one was rated nc17 but I don't know for sure. Um, you'd think you'd look it up after giving me shit. I didn't give you <laughs> shit. I corrected a mistake you made. <laughs> well, I'm correcting you now, bitch. <laughs> now, Just babe. Say anything incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm correcting you now, Abe. Um, anyway, we get to a su- we get to a subplot which feels shoehorned in, but they introduce this character who's like it's his first day at at school hell. <laughs> Or hell, else yeah, hell, hell TV broadcasting or whatever. Yeah, yeah I was kind of like, how do these people get these jobs? Then how do I get this job? <laughs> well, you, you have, to, have die, to die, but you also have to be shitty before you die. So and you go. It's probably whoever the the Bill Cosby Scrooge or Bill Cosby, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Bill Murray's Scrooge character Ooh, would probably yes. die and and be introduced right. and come in and be like before be like before his, yeah before his heart grew two sizes or three sizes or whatever um and then has that weird scene at the end and we did that movie two years ago uh (laughs) he comes in he looks around he's acting very meek and then suddenly he's like well this is how i would do things and spike's like no simmer down simmer down and that puts the the you see the fire grow underneath this other character throughout the movie um this actor he really familiar. wants Spike to lose. He whatever. really does because he wants to see what happens if Spike loses. Is what I, is how I sort of read that. Uh, because I just this thought is he where, wanted him to get fired. Yeah, so he could have his job, and he spoiler alert gets his job at the end, I think. But the this is where we do actually learn um, about the parameters of the game that's being played. Essentially. And Soul comes in, Soul gets sucked in because of a treaty with the other guys, aka God in heaven. Um, they have 24 hours to basically kill these people. If they can escape, their souls are spared and they go back to the world of the living, I guess. Uh, if they lose, they get a pineapple up the ass, like in Little Nicky. Um <laughs> I guess that's what they do to Hitler. That's what they do to Hitler in Little I just assume that you're subject to having to watch that horrible Wayne's World zombie show for eternity. (laughs) Or you have to watch this movie. That was another part where I was like, this is not doing it for me. (laughs) It was funny funny. because I actually watched Wayne's World the other day, uh, just like on the weekend before watching this. And then this came up like, oh, that's an interesting coincidence or whatever. It's like, it's like, you know, when like your phones listen to you and then your shit pops up. It felt yeah. like that. Yes. That's what Targeted happened. Advertising via your I tar- I was I snuck in your house. I watched you watch <laughs> I watched Wayne's World with you, but from behind a chair. 
<laughs> and then <laughs> I laugh. Just, so for me, Boom. I think the issue is that like parody for me can be funny, but a lot of parody is not, not funny to me. And See, this was kind of felt like lazy parody to me. I love parody. And I agree with you that as a 37 year old, it's lazy. But when I was, when I knew the concept of Wayne's world only in 1992, when I was eight, seven years old or eight years old or nine or whenever I saw this and yeah. I saw this, I was like, that's genius. Well, he these guys are so smart. Hey, went, well, it's Dwayne. And he's Let's like, call it looks... Dwayne's world, and it'll be dead Wayne. Dwayne. They there tried to get uh, they tried to get them to be those characters, but I guess they were busy doing Wayne's world too at the time or something. If it oh, was man. actually that, was actually that would awesome. be because yeah, they're be Garth's impression specifically was very good. Wayne's yeah. uh, that was not Mike Mike Myers. Yeah. Um, but if somebody told me that was Dana Carvey as Garth, I'd be like, oh yeah, okay, I can see that. That would have been so weird if they got one of them, but not the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that could happen. They don't like each other in real life, apparently. Dana Carvey. What? Dana Carvey has been on um, Howard Stern many times and been like, "We don't." The reason they've never done a third one, even though they make Jury? a third one out of everything, or after. Yeah. years after, in like the early two thousands. But the reason why they never made a third one, even just for the cash grab, is because they don't really get along with each other even though they were on snl together and everything that sucks from 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 all accounts mike myers is like thinks he's the greatest of all time but his track record shows that he's really good at making like schlocky comedies yeah at kind of coming i mean go. i think he's he's pretty funny but uh yeah, but it's I unfortunate mean, that so many people say that he's difficult to work with it, it's funny too because like he's he, canadian he, that doesn't sound right we don't have to love every canadian um yeah there are assholes everywhere <laughs> it's true the it's true. the thing that i always think about with mike myers is how much of a cultural phenomenon austin powers was and literally the third one was like oh i'm over it and literally yeah. three years later borat comes out and everybody st stops saying groovy baby and starts saying my hey, wife speak for yourself nice. i still say groovy baby really i said i i, un I accidentally unironically said groovy baby to madison a couple weeks ago my wife my wife uh and she was like did you just quote austin powers in 2022 and i was like my wife you said yeah baby afterwards said, yeah baby groovy <laughs> <laughs> I'm so holy. Uh, shagadelic. Shagadelic. Um, Eric King. I, I got my train of thought back. Eric King is the name of the new guy. He plays Pierce. Um, and he looks very familiar. And he was on Dexter. And he was in National Treasure. And he was on True Crime. Not that True Crime, but he played Pussy Man in True Crime starring Clint e Eastwood. Ah, yes, Pussy Man. We're is that a descriptive that name or? <laughs> it's just as the. It's just the name of his character. I just thought that was funny. Uh, oh, he's on, he's on Oz, which is probably where I recognize him from. I've never been. <laughs> it's fucked. I don't, I don't have HBO. I like that he gets the the I remote it on control showcase. thing at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit more about how this thing works and why it looks so cool. Because they didn't have to build this contraption, but he it pops out of your wrist from here it seems like it only goes about this far and it comes out with such power right in the palm of your hand yeah and then it starts to spin and then i i assume it would keep spinning if he didn't grab it because then when he's holding it he's kind of holding it tightly right but uh the reason it looks so cool is the spinning like the spinning is what's so cool about it and the fact that it pops out anytime somebody has something pop out of their sleeve like with a mechanism it's cool in every movie that it's in. <laughs> well, I think that the, the, the thing that captivated me by it is how that it didn't look poorly made. Like it looked yeah. like a, if I if that existed in our world, yeah. I would be like, check this out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like check a magic trick. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. And like every time it happened, I was delighted. And every time it didn't happen, I was kind of disappointed. I was like, ah, man, they need to show that thing more. <laughs> The show remote, it all the time every the remotes time you pull it out in this movie were really interesting too because they tried to make them extra futuristic by having like little flashing lights and they're like beeping <laughs> and i'm like if my fucking remote control had flashing lights and was beeping i'd be like i would no, smash it to smithereens I don't like it but then the movie wouldn't be as interesting looking i that's true i guess 
I guess we it's do there for our benefit, reality. not their benefit. Um, I'm sure the people that are playing us as a video game think that things in our world are stupid, like all the racism, bigotry, and, and homophobia. Yeah. And They're like, I can't wait for the the new patch <laughs> where they tone this racism. <laughs> they get rid shit of this down. terrible shit. Where the cops the cops have a, a glitch now where they just shoot black people in the back as much as they possibly can. God. But also, but also, teenagers get to about 17 in the United States and then decide to shoot up a school. So we got to change the NPCs. Um, <laughs> We gotta change the NPCs coding. Non-playable uh, characters for, uh, for non-playable character viewers. Yeah. Sorry, that's how this Jason views all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have main character syndrome, but I do have whatever. You're the, the star is. of your movie. No, but I I do have the syndrome where uh, I'm not the main character, but my group, the everybody I know is is in the movie. Like you guys An are your ensemble own ensemble cast. Yeah, exactly. We're in. <laughs> I'm part of an ensemble cast. Nice. Because I'm not that. I'm humble ish. I'm humble ish. <laughs> I'm working on a new TV for uh, NBC this fall called Humble Ish. Got some humbly in my tumbly. It's a spin off. <laughs> it's a spin off of Blackish, but it's just white people. So it's called Humble Ish. And, so every uh, other television show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> And don't worry, we're not woke, so we won't have any gay characters or women on it. What do you mean? <laughs> this doesn't sound progressive at all. I'm about to cancel your ass. Where's my remote? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was just that was a little bit about uh, people. Fucking boomers are using the word woke to just yeah. They just use it interchangeably. <laughs> they just use it interchangeably for like people they don't like you know yeah. well you're yeah. so woke i remember when uh the new jurassic park was being advertised there was just a picture of chris pratt and a woman of color it was just a picture like a set fo- photograph and everybody was just like oh this shit's so fucking woke now and i'm like what just for existing <laughs> you don't even know what the character's name is or what they're doing wait till they're you clearly see... a side character wait till you see the internet have a collective meltdown where in the future when they have an all black um fucking x-men which i think is happening which i think is is going to happen because they cast a black professor x i could see them making a fully black casted x-men and it being saw some stuff about this too and these people were like isn't the whole reason that professor x survived world war ii is because he was white i'm like i'm pretty sure professor x is american (laughs) didn't go to war because he was in a you're thinking you're (laughs) thinking of um, (laughs) you're thinking of magneto who is jewish (laughs) <laughs> yeah and also like we don't have to use that timeline especially if it's modern day x-men you're not going to have like a 105 year old magneto no and in the multiverse <laughs> they're gonna change the story want. yeah i know you can do whatever you want but it's like you can just make the story different like who gives a fuck that's what the whole fuck. thing is anyway it's like, annoying to me question. and it gets me frustrated that people are so upset about stuff it's like so many people are going to deny themselves the excellent opportunity of watching Prey, which is a really, really good movie. And a, I would say probably the second best Predator movie next to the first Predator movie. And there are people that are just not going to watch it because it's about a Native American woman. Yeah, because it's, it's like, so woke that it's a woman. And also you can, there's an edit. And, that's and she's this, indigenous. And it's, yeah, you can watch the- You can watch it uh, in Cherokee. Is it Cherokee? No, it's uh, it, uh, Comanche. 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 Yeah. I um, vouch for. I definitely stand by watching uh, certain things in their natural, like native tongue or whatever, as opposed to like being dubbed over. Like, well, this isn't du- so. They dub it with. Comanche. They dub it with Comanche, yeah. So there's a, a cut you can watch that is dubbed with the actual language. But oh, the, the okay. movie is shot with them all speaking English, but you're supposed oh, okay. to use your imagination to believe that they are speaking Comanche. And then gotcha. they meet like a French guy at one point, and they're speaking French, and then he starts speaking English, but he's actually speaking her language so gotcha. it's like you just gotta like in your brain be like no they're not speaking english even though they clearly are in the movie but yeah freaky dinky dutch <laughs> and then the freaky dinky dutch show up and the predator goes fucking thrashing on their ass <laughs> um then they do a lampoon of godzilla this felt right. like uhf this felt like the way uhf just does sort of it's called like Attack of the Stinky Footed, like the Spike says the Stinky name. Footed Lizard or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's the Stinky Footed Lizard. Um, we don't learn it yet, but Seidenbaum leaves his wife to get squished, and he bounces to another channel. Does do yeah. they? We find out later that he has a remote. He took he brought his remote it with, him, with yeah. him. 
it was from yeah from his 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 free trial tv or whatever do we see him use it here though or does he just like or is it not revealed i think he fully? goes to use no, it. no he runs towards the camera and runs off screen you don't see okay. him pull it out or anything but yeah later on he's like i brought my remote with me and i just bounce every time it gets too sticky and there are some really you cool... guys sorry go ahead oh no go ahead kaylin i'm gonna change the subject this is just along the lines of the remote. Do you guys remember those? The I think it was at like uh, what, what was the thing called Radio Shack or or whatever that thing was called. Um, it was like a universal remote, and it was like it was like there weren't like physical buttons. It was almost like almost like a touch screen thing. Almost I think it was called a chameleon, and it would like it could like kind of I don't remember the specifics of it because I never actually had it. But I remember seeing it there and it was like it was just like a smooth remote control. But then when you turned it on and played around with the settings, you could make certain buttons be there. Kind of. I knew what you're talking about. Like, a, I've never heard of this, but I just am picturing a skinny iPad. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically a long, a long, skinny. Yeah. Skinny. IPad. I know what you're talking about, because when Radio Shack was a thing, <clears throat> I used to fucking love it. Like it was the only place where you could go find random computer games they had those bins of remember shareware like little three and a half inch floppies with like the first level of doom or like the oh, first level yeah, of commander like, well, keen um yeah. and then you had to you booted the game up you got to play that first stage or whatever like and then at the end of it part. it's kind of like a demo it was like the full game but just the first episode and yeah. then and then at the end it would be like here's a snail mail address send us a check and we'll we'll send you the rest of the game people like oh, to complain yeah, so you would get those in like cereal boxes sometimes too as or, well yes yeah. people like to complain now about dlc but like computer gaming in the in the mid 90s was like <laughs> way more predatory i think in that respect because just like jeffrey this, jones you get this <laughs> <laughs> too soon too soon <laughs> Not soon enough. Let's you know. Uh, anyway, um, that's great. But I loved I loved Radio Shack uh because it was like the true there were no video game stores really yet. Um, and they had video games, they had like a nice display case behind the person working, and you could just sit there and marvel at all the games you could never play. Fast forward fucking 30 years, and I have so many video games that um my head spins my head spins. Well, here's the thing now. Xbox Live was very good for many years. Xbox Ultimate, Game Pass Ultimate, and now PlayStation's is the same. It's the exact same. It's just as viable. The only difference is they don't release new games yet, but they did That's stray, true. so they've started right. So, yeah, if we'll probably I do... do it eventually because if you have Game Pass as a person who has Xbox or uh, computer. Any game that's oh, like made by a studio that Microsoft owns, you get on the you pass get on for day free, one. basically. Yeah. And and the thing that's crazy is I have both right now because Steve, I needed to play games with you, um, and then I'm a PlayStation person, and I have people I play PlayStation with. Um, that's fourteen hundred games minimum, right there. Too many. Then on top of that, I buy games all the time because I, you know, I I like to buy new games. It's crazy uh it's too much back then there would be like six super nintendo games that each cost 120 dollars. there's no way you were, my parents would even fucking buy this for me for my birthday or christmas yeah no i would way. get like one game a year basically i would have to like you had to like really like pick a pick one very specifically because you weren't getting more than one it was like yeah just there were I, game boy was good because game boy games were cheaper and i knew i had friends who had parents with money so i and they had game boys with a bunch of games because they were only 60 bucks and i knew what games would last a long time and i specifically remember going to cons uh, consumer distributors and getting super mario land 2 for the game boy and then a few years later getting super mario land 3 uh wario land or whatever and those both of those games being like super long Nice. comparatively to like something i got follow the foot clan ninja turtles one year for easter and it was like impossible because it's a fucking game boy game and <laughs> i i remember playing the first like two levels over and over and over and over like a fucking video game crackhead it's so weird that now it's 
you basically just play through a story. You can just put it on easy mode and just coast, you know? Anyway, there's a really cool show. <laughs> there's a really cool scene in this moment that looked really good on my TV in 1080p where Spike is sort of telling Pierce how it is. Like, this is, you know, we do things a certain way around here. And do you guys remember the scene? They move back onto that neon, like, map. The, the board? The board in the background. And they go in, they go silhouetted because it's, like, the difference right. in color yeah, and yeah, contrast. Yeah. I thought that was a really cool shot. Um, yeah. And they have that weird sp spot later where there's, like, just the dude smoking in a wheelchair. And I'm like, is this, this is just, like, a Dr. Strangelove, uh, <laughs> like, cameo or something? Like, what is going on here? And then they never show him again later. He's just gone. He just wheels off. That's your Professor X right there. I'm just paying homage to everything at the same time. Yeah. I didn't uh, I didn't hear a movie title shout out. Uh, we haven't had one in a little bit. Um, Eugene plays a character named Crowley. And he's wisecracking to the point that he gets thrown into the game. Um, I like that he was just slowly losing more limbs as the, <laughs> the movie went on. Oh, the other thing, sorry, the last thing this movie reminded me of was sort of was Bart's Nightmare, the game for Super Nintendo. Bart, in the storyline of that game is pretty simple. Bart is doing homework and he falls asleep and goes into a dream world. But you go, you have to find like the conduits like they do in this to go to another dream world. Yeah. And, and they're all different and it's like eclectic and just a bunch of different this stuff. This is weird. And there is a way to beat that game. People get people are good at that game and speed run it. And watching people play this game, I was like, how the fuck was I supposed to figure that out as a 10 year old? How the <laughs> yeah, fuck I was they... I was so bad at video games when I was a kid. And then something happened. I think Goldeneye is what happened. And then I so, somehow yeah, became really era. good at them. I was like, now I'm better. It's just like a dumb kid playing at the same level of F Zero over and over again, never actually getting further in the game. It was probably your like your brain was growing and evolving. I think it's just like your your hand eye coordination kind of plateaus yeah. and gets better, and then and you figure out how the like the game meta the game works, like the the, the game play loop. Like yeah. with, with also, Mario video games Kart, were harder when we were kids they because were. they were short and they just Yo, wanted Crash you Bandicoot to have to hard as shit. Yeah, yeah, it's because they wanted to make it a challenge, not just like a hand holdy. Let's beat this game in an afternoon kind of thing right and all the money came from rentals and they had to make sure that you rented a game and didn't beat it and then never played it again you'd have to be like <laughs> i gotta make it fun enough that you're gonna want to play it again but hard enough that you're not going to beat it in a weekend really yeah get, yeah um and it, it's what? crazy Video game I, companies it, made money off of rentals that was that was that was baked into their like into their model that's why oh. games are hard. I thought it was not. just like Blockbuster would buy like a hundred thousand copies of a game. They would, but they, they made would all have, the profit. They would. Well, have from what to... I understand of that Blockbuster documentary, they the reason why they were able to get such a good price is because they gave the companies residuals or whatever of their their yeah. their, their sales or whatever. Okay. Their rental. But it, yeah, it's it the sense. same. It's the same concept as an arcade, right? Like the arcade games are all fucked, and they are the person who owns the cabinet is able to adjust the the difficulty, and if oh. nobody's playing it, they turn the difficulty down a little bit until people start playing it a bunch and they turn it back up you can't nice. really do that with video games as much because you kind of like easy medium hard essentially but the but the thing is is like in that era there were so many shovelware bullshit you know movie tie-in games that were basically just mario brothers ripoffs that were difficult for the sake of being difficult but you're a kid you see it you're like oh fucking aladdin you take Aladdin home and it's oh, hard as shit, On but Sega? it's awesome. And it look or Sega or Super Nintendo. It looks great and it's fucking fun to play. And you're not getting very far. And then it goes into your sort of mental list. This is this is what happened with me anyway. These games would go into my mental list of like a go-to game if I can't pick anything or the game yeah. I want wasn't available. And then you rent that game over and over, even though you never beat it. Um, that was baked into movie rental places, and that's why video games didn't stop. Like now, a hard video game is a genre, a souls yeah. born like, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, people like easy games now, but people also, there's still the, the pervs out there that love uh, to be tortured by their video <laughs> games experiences. The turbo um, perverts who want to just play every fucking. I mean, game. and, you know, I, I enjoy when games are a little bit more difficult, especially when you get good at them. And, but I, I always have the option to turn the difficulty up or down if I. Yeah. If I want to, right? I like a game 
I like a game. I always play games on normal I, I, as, as they're intended to be played, in my opinion. I assume that the developers like this is how the game's supposed to be played. You can make it easier if you're finding it too hard. Yeah. A game like uh, that Spider-Man game that you played, Kalen, the DLCs for it were so mind-numbing, like mind-numbingly repetitive and just get harder and harder, even on mm -hmm. normal, that I turned, just to get through it, I turned down the difficulty because I just wanted them to be over with. Yeah. But I wanted to finish. There, there. What I kind of like in, in some video games is like, so like the Arkham series, when you turn the difficulty up in Arkham, um, what it does is rather than making the game enemies have more health or you have less health they turn off like the prompts and stuff the things that yeah. warn you when you're about to get hit so you have to yeah, like visually huge. recognize when someone's about to punch you rather than a flashing light telling you you're about to get punched right it's kind of cool and i uh i appreciate that kind of like intuition of like how what a player is going to enjoy it versus like let's just make all of these bad guys take 10 punches enemies. instead of five punches yeah whatever, right? yeah. yeah absolutely uh, so the next, yeah, that's a good point. I like that. I like that as well. I also like it when the difficulty isn't based off of the enemies being bullet sponges or like, yeah. like, I, I don't want to just turn up the difficulty and it's just, you just got to hit the, the enemy more or less. That's yeah. one problem I have with like the Fallout games and stuff. It's like yeah. when you're turning the difficulty up, all you're doing is giving the bad guys better accuracy and making them take a million bullets in the head to die. You're but like, after, this doesn't make any sense to me. After 20 hours in a Fallout game, I have to play it on the hardest difficulty because it's too fucking easy the way I, yeah. the way that I just min-max those. You can get so good so fast in Fallout games. If you don't know what you're if doing, if you know what you're doing, yeah. If, if, if you're just you kind of playing and dumping skills into whatever, whatever, yeah, it can take forever. Yeah. When I was first learning how to play them, my first run of of uh, Fallout Three, I fucking sucked. But by the time I got to New Vegas and knew how what the meta is, sort of to like explore, yeah, and, and level up that way, just going from place to place. Like Fallout games are like one of my favorite franchises but fuck man they get so easy you should download fallout 76 we've been playing it really on xbox yeah. i would absolutely play that with you oh man i gotta start over i got a character on my fucking place. <laughs> Sorry, we're low we're low levels too i will play um, that with you cool cool fallout because um, it's good now it's good i um i got it at launch and it wasn't so good but i had some people to play with too, so yeah. it was fun but now it's a fully realized game i didn't have anyone to play with and i was sad <laughs> lonely wandering the late the wasteland the lonely wandering. there were no npcs just recordings left behind by <laughs> ghosts so whatever. dumb yeah. now there's lots of npcs um i'm gonna just bang through where we kind of got sidetracked on video games during our tele this television movie so i'm gonna bang through a bunch of stuff um basically, ba basically the next world they go into is the pro wrestling world where they wrestle a giant man and a giant woman and the announcer is captain lou albana who famously played mario on the super mario brothers super show oh the, that's why i know who he is i was like this guy looks really familiar but he didn't say he was also super part, mario brothers super super mario. Show. <laughs> he was also part of the uh birth of professional wrestling of rock and wrestling which is the birth of professional wrestling as we know it now which is when i went into the mainstream with hulkamania him and cindy lopper were like a a, a, a a team of an of managers kind of uh the big guy is a wrestler who wrestled under the name one man gang and he was also known as akeem the dream the woman is a relative nobody <laughs> she wasn't a wrestler i looked her up but she was a stunt woman for a lot of stuff and she did do a lot of work in uh like action movies and stuff um she's not a nobody she's just a nobody to you to me in the stunt community she's a hero they, <laughs> they easily dispatch these wrestlers with their ingenuities uh then the kids well, i don't know easily she takes like a mic stand and like beats them to death with it <laughs> that's true yeah um so we missed it we missed a moment earlier where the kids oh yeah you did the parent trap the kids are leaving so the parents will get along that's when they get into the fight about mm -hmm. And that's the catalyst. And we get to hear the sister being really rude to the brother over and over again. The kid comes home. The kids come home. Parents aren't there. The fucking they the the daughter immediately has all her friends over. Yeah, yeah. Even though she just came home from a sleepover, it's fucking weird. 
it is so it's like and she's so excited to to just have friends over in the backyard practicing cheerleading it's like wouldn't you be able to do that when your parents are there yeah um yeah so you're not really doing drugs same, and drinking um oh we have another shout out we remember the tv show shout out do you guys want to take any guesses um which one is this I'm trying to remember. there were so many of them that it's hard like if you give me a hint i'll probably get it um i can't really it's it's autopsies of the rich and famous oh you could have just said it had to do with operations and i would have oh. known. <laughs> okay well the next one the next one is a commercial parody commercial for a famous uh uh audio equipment oh yeah the max hell which is dolby um the dolby i thought it was commercial. maxwell or is it maxwell i thought those were maybe they have dolby technology but uh that is a famous ad campaign from the 80s where it's a dude. Oh, the chair one. Yeah. But in this one, his head gets blown off. And it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Which I was wondering what, what, what the gag was going to be. And I was like, is his head going to get ripped off? <laughs> and it did. And it would made me laugh. Okay. Here, here's one. A show from our childhoods about a Mountie. <clears throat> oh, it was... Uh, Dudley? No, overexposed. Um, oh, 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 overexposed. Nor northern overexposure yes. well just northern exposure this show is just called the same thing but instead he just freezes to death <laughs> <laughs> i like the description where it's like uh like a banker from california goes to the north and just complains about everything yeah. <laughs> I, I started laughing pretty hard at that so this is the next movie the next show that they're in um essentially essentially they the the trap here is that it's it's the tundra there's wolves Crowley shows up. Crowley is uh, trying to find the conduit. This is where he explains the conduits and now how each world has sort of a, a way out. The doorway, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. He, he finds it as wolves show up. He's digging in the sand, in the in the sand, in the snow. <laughs> this is where he loses his first appendage, which is a finger. Yeah. Because he's frozen he off. Like, he's like, one, he's, two. Yeah. It's like, but he does it on the very first one. Yeah. It's not like he goes on two, three, snap. It's like he just snaps it right away. Like, oh um and then back in the back in the household the kid the kids uh the son almost gets sucked young in. mac his, damon his buck his bike gets sucked in um then crowley yeah crowley explains the situation the wife is just pissed off she's just mad ned's yeah. like i don't or roy i kept calling him ned for some reason roy's like i don't know i bought it got a tv from some guy who gave it to me for free i'm trying to get us out of here and she's like well you should have been watching tv to begin with and he's like that doesn't matter right now yeah we're in a shack with hungry wolves outside of it yeah please stop being mean to me <laughs> we get another tv reference another tv reference this one uh, oh is... is it the mansons <laughs> no that was a good one but uh th this one there's no it's 30 something to life so there was a show on in the 90s i think it was a drama called 30 something okay. 30 somethings and it was just like people it was just a drama about people our age um nice. but this one they're in prison i don't know why it's dark oh like, right yeah 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 they're like decorating like, dude, their cell <laughs> oh it doesn't it's looking at like swatches. swatches i thought they were gonna yeah, make yeah. a bad gay joke or something but it was just it was just fine no they're like, they're happy the they're sharing a cell they're they just yeah. want to redecorate and then the, everyone's like no no that color will clash with the bars <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and then the no next one this is you a got a wolf on your shirt was it for that scene uh no this is wizard wolf wizard wolf the beer it's a from beer. bellwoods um the silencer of the lambs i for actually right now i'm forgetting which was, joke that was it's the kids won't shut up in the car and then uh right and they're then, wearing uh, a oh, right, it's a product it's a product yeah. that one i was like thumbs down <laughs> this one stinks <laughs> but the but the prop that they made for it it looks looked really good i thought sure yeah props to the prop <laughs> <laughs> And then yeah, the leave it to the leave it to Beaver parody, meet the Mansons, um, and then the fucking kid, uh, what's the kid's name? It's like it's he's got some like, Daryl. Dwayne Daryl, yeah, he's got some like like who names her kid Daryl? Sorry, Daryl's sorry, Daryl's. All our fans are named Daryl. It's, it's not a terrible name. <laughs> Daryl. Daryl. Never meet a Daryl these days. Daryl Strawberry. Is that another Simpsons? 
uh, reference? Yeah, that's sterile strawberry. <laughs> and then he cries. He starts to cry. They're pro they're athletes. Mocking. They don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, like a single tear goes down his face. <laughs> um, he sees his, the kid, see, Daryl sees his bike in the show and he tries to tell his sister and his sister's like, that could be any bike. It my could. point of view, but from my point of view, is this show clearly is set in like the fifties or the sixties, and that bike yeah. is clearly from the. Ah, uh, that's a good point. That's a good. Yeah, point. it's clearly. like that uh, Charlie Chaplin movie where the lady's on a cell phone or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so the conspiracy goes. Um, Turns out she was actually just deaf or something, and didn't was like trying to, or it was too loud. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It was either she had really good like hearing deaf. or really bad hearing. I can't remember. <laughs> This is where I wrote down that Diane is a terrible actor. Um, okay, so in the TV world, they decide to make a move to the conduit, uh, but the wolves get Crowley and eat the fuck out of him. And yeah. the shack also starts on fire. Because what I'm thinking, in this shack, Crowley explains to them that they have 24 hours at this point. And in my head, I go, well, you have to stay in the shack. Just fucking stay as long as possible. Just as long as you can. Obviously... It's not going to be great, but then the fucking shack just bursts into flames. Like I get that they, the lantern they, they broke. locked over a lantern, yeah. but yeah. like from my point of view, it just seemed like chaos immediately happened. So I think chaos has yeah. to happen in this universe to keep things moving. Because there's a yeah. lot of points where you could just stay there, just stay. Still. Well, I mean, they show the clock and they they stayed in there for like six hours. Like yeah. they were there for a long time. That's true, especially as the movie gets on. They, it, yeah. they, like, it was, uh, there's one point towards the end where it just moves forward an hour in one, like, it shows the clock and then one thing, and then it's an hour later on the clock. Yeah. Um, right. So they push the they push the uh, shack over top of the conduit like a fishing hole, which is almost like a puzzle. It. I liked it. I liked that too. It felt like a puzzle, like a video, almost like a video game mm-hmm. thing. Escape yeah. room. Yeah. yeah, we designed a, a room called Red Room. Uh, when I used to work at escape games and you had to like literally move the room and it would take people forever to figure it out. Nice. That's nice cool. to work. Nice to work in it <clears throat> and play it and play. It. I played it once and then I liked in it. I didn't get to play that one because I had to learn how to build it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like vaguely remember it now. I, I was one of the more, um, more like basic ones. People got frustrated with that one. Yeah. Cause it yeah. was like, once basic. you get over the gimmick of moving the room, you're like, these puzzles are too hard. <laughs> yeah, basic in that it didn't seem like much when you walked in. It was just you're just solving puzzles compared to the original room, which would like is like a mystery or like um, the time travel lab, which is like that anyway, was the best one. We've talked about that mechanic. Yeah, anyway. or the or the ones sorry the ones in Casa Loma, which are like crazy immersive, super elaborate. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the next world is the animated. It's like Tom and Jerry basically. The cat is a robot. Um, the son sees them. The wife says exactly who they are at one point during this. Uh, this is the uh, Ned and his wife have a Ned. I did it again. Where am I getting Ned from? Maybe Neebly? Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ned Schneebly. Ned Schneebly. Oh, maybe Little that's Rock? what it is. Roy. Yeah. Roy Neebly. Red Ned Schneebly. <laughs> I think that's what happened in my brain. Honestly. Could be. Yeah. Uh, they Roy and his wife, fucking what's her name? Uh, her Helen. Name. Helen. They finally have a heart to heart in this world. I thought this moment, this bit was pretty well animated. It reminded me of the animation from the from Roger Rabbit, but specifically yeah. no, the Roger Rabbit animation is ten thousand times better. Better, this. but the yeah. specifically the animation in that short that the, the open baby, baby short. The baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it reminded me a lot of that sort of like it's 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 that same tom and jerry violence but turned up a little bit to make it uncomfortable which i that's my favorite trope it's one of my I, favorite uh, tropes. i really thought that this part went on too long <laughs> oh like, really okay, we get it. They're yeah, well, they had to spend the money on the fucking animation. i know they probably <laughs> animated that whole thing and then like put it in and they probably even realized maybe this is going on too long but they spent all the time and money to animate it all but uh, the one gag I liked is that he's like, how would an animated person solve this? And then he like sends yeah. away in the mail for a robot dog. Like, that's a good gag. Good, good work. But I was, yeah, there was a little bit too much going on. <laughs> he also says the best line in the movie. He says, that, that is one clever pussy. Ugh. And looks right down the barrel of the camera. Yeah. 
I think I mean, that's the exact noise I made when I heard that. Joke. Ugh. <laughs> ugh. I went, ugh. Um, yeah, oh, they do gross. some cartoon shit. Uh, they order a robot dog. The house explodes. Uh, but the the Acme, conduit is they, a, they order from Acme. The conduit is a like mouse a cartoon mouse hole that the cat bolts over. That still doesn't open but then he goes over and pulls on it and then it falls over and crushes him and he turns into a pancake because it's a cartoon <clears throat> um they bounce the looney tunes song actually plays during this during the end of that that would be that that's all folks um and then they show an ad for the television program uh different strokes where it's just a bunch of old dudes having strokes mm-hmm. my dad had a stroke um, they're having two different types of strokes i can laugh at it but only i can laugh at it oh good thing i didn't find it funny and didn't laugh at it <laughs> yeah good here here's a here's a moment they say bitch the next show is called my three sons of bitches oh yeah that was good <laughs> <laughs> that made me chuckle uh and then here the Dwayne's underworld bit um, Ugh, that was... so the funny the i i wrote would people get this joke now because they probably wouldn't it's been so long since wayne's world has even been a thing Right. Yeah, I don't think that like Gen Z would get it. Some of them might, but I, I don't. I don't think that Wayne's World is in the sort of like zeitgeist of not the, younger, Alexa, the yeah. younger generation. They haven't been like ref- referenced on TikTok ever. You know what I mean? There's been no Wayne's yeah. World trend. Maybe we should. I mean, there are probably Wayne younger trend. people who don't even know what Austin Powers is. You know, like yeah it's it's been like 20 teenagers. years since the first yeah. one almost like teenagers who just never heard of it the uh the joke that stuck with me for my whole life from seeing this movie for the first time was the i worship satin bit um yeah. Yeah. that stuck with me f- since i saw the movie in 1992 i didn't know what the warship was i was like i vote red it's a warship and it was clearly satin <laughs> that the satin thing was like okay <laughs> I that's get what the, they're doing, but I wouldn't have guessed that neither. I think that's the joke, though. I think that it's just they'll do anything for the devil. Um, I did, however, laugh at the extreme close-up, the camera zooming into his face oh, and yeah, yeah, in yeah. the face. I thought that was funny. And then it turns out it's the next one's going to be a red hot poker to the eye, and he, <laughs> he moves and it takes off. He's he's roped up, takes off Burns his ropes, rope off. yeah, and he escapes into a film noir. This is this is where he oh back at the command deck the new guy's trying to take over doesn't really matter then we see an ad for women exercising literally oh, the exercisers, the exercisers. <laughs> uh then yogi beer which is the kid drinking beer he calls his mom babe you, you know. <laughs> which is like work. probably bitch is probably less offensive now <laughs> i th- yeah babe. <laughs> i think bitch would have been funnier because it's, I it definitely would have been funnier it's like south park kind of humor um <clears throat> then we get to the point where the son finally sees roy in the movie in the the show and gets diane he calls to see him it. roy didn't he call him roy i thought that was weird it's like it's Does, roy. Um, I, yeah i think the son's like roy oh maybe he said dad but he probably said dad no no, no the, you know it's they are they're talking to each other and as the cartoon she calls him roy and then he's like, mom, dad, like he's responding to uh, okay. the mom saying, right, yeah. Um, the kids try to formulate a plan. Um, and they go to the Seiden bomb house from the beginning. Um, sorry. That's later. <laughs> they go to Club Seiden bomb, where the guy from the beginning is the man of the hour. He's basically like the guy, the main mobster. This, and... this part has the funniest thing for me in the whole movie which is when he drops the gun and it goes off and then his assistant buzzes him and says like mr neebly you dropped your gun again oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. i know see that's that's john Ritter, that's classic john ritter style comedy i just opinion. think it's hilarious that she had to tell him and that he's done it before <laughs> <It's> <laughs> very funny to me um his wife helen is with sidon mom um, I forget how they got split up. Maybe when they just switched worlds. It was they the just... mouse, the cartoon she went through first. Okay. And then the whole got covered. Yeah, he, he they ended through. up in the same world, but she, because she was there first, she was there first split yeah. up or whatever. Yeah. Um, I imagine time moves differently in these worlds. In hell. Yeah. In hell. <laughs> 
Uh, so Sun Mom explains that he has the remote. He's been he's flipping channels. He finally got to this place and it's just been chilling. That's my advice. Boss it up. Uh, two seconds later, a rival mobster kicks the door down, and starts shooting the place up. <laughs> yeah, and then everybody in the whole place pulls a gun out and shoots each other. <laughs> yep. Uh, he gets shot. He relinqu- relinquishes the remote, um, and then they go into the French Revolution. It's basically Les Mis or like Marie Antoinette. But the thing is, is this when I was a kid, I would tune out of this movie so hard for this part, like for the fr- the French Revolution stuff. And it happened to me this time around too. I just it's visually unappealing. Um, it's a little funny that he's dressed like a lady, but like I, I don't think it. it you know. It's not- it's, it's not whatever <laughs> kind of whatever i think the best part is when uh eugene levy is like ah vertical boobs interesting choice <laughs> <laughs> um they find they find out they well, we find out they have two and a half hours left uh they're kind of sweating at the control deck crowley is alive <laughs> he has no leg um which is great because he <laughs> fed it to the wolves and escaped while they were chewing on his limbs <laughs> <laughs> yep they uh it, it turns out that Roy is somebody of importance who's hiding and they're going to guillotine him. Um, meanwhile, WizKid is building just random electronics, just yeah, just jamming electronics together. The old uh, setup payoff, but it, yeah, he rigged set up, it up at the beginning specifically yeah, for this moment. <laughs> it's the same bit from the beginning where he rigs up a dish and he points it at the hell dish and his me, his meager earth dish is now pointing at the hell dish and it's supposed to do something uh, but it needs more power so he yeah. turns it on oh, 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 oh. yeah oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> he, t- he needs more power it's guillotine i'm still writing his name as ned in my notes here <laughs> <laughs> you wrote ned. multiple ned times guillotine <laughs> That's my wrestling name. Um, it's guillotine time for Ned, is what I wrote. There's no Ned in this movie. Um, how come he dresses like a woman and the other person goes, I do that sometimes. That's supposed to be a fucking great joke about cross-dressing. I kind of giggled at that one. <laughs> I just like the way he like looked at him afterwards. Like, it's like <laughs> don't you? Don't you. <laughs> Uh, the kid blasts the dish with his dish and now can communicate. Yeah, he 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 infiltrates audio only from the heavens, Hell and everybody thinks he's God. Obviously, they think he's God. Uh, Spike <clears throat> strangles the new guy um, at the control deck, and the woman who's like the woman from, you know, up top or down below comes and she's like you fucked up you took two people in you're only let it's one contract per dish you gotta relate you gotta let one of them go um and then time runs out but spike discharges roy and keeps the wife because he's the one that signed the contract for her yeah yeah well well i think it's also he knows that roy will come back to try and get her so he'll have a second chance to still have a second yeah um Whereas if he let the wife go, there wasn't a guarantee because she has been trying to leave the entire time and leave him behind. <laughs> She'd be like, okay, fuck, yeah, fuck him. He, he's, yeah, he's, he's in hell now. Hell. We can yeah. watch him on the TV for the for the next couple episodes of shows. I wrote in my notes, I wrote Ned instead of Roy a couple times. So now my notes are made. Every time, yeah. <laughs> uh, Spike takes the wife to a Western, puts her on a train track in classic fashion up against uh, a bunch of explosives. And she remarks... You have me tied to the tracks and also tied to explosives. Yeah, you're going to run me over and blow me up. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be hit. Yeah. Roy zaps himself back into the hell zone and somehow goes right to the correct channel. Uh, thanks, son, I guess. Gunner does a little bits of great physical comedy throughout the movie I wrote down here. Uh, he shoots. He, Roy gets shot, but it gets the remote. They have a little dust out. They punch and kick. Then they start going from channel to channel, which is always a, a gimmick I like when it happens in movies like this. They mm-hmm. first go to Star Trek TNG, where all of the rest of the... What? I was just laughing because I was remembering when he turns around and 
when yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be Worf or whatever. And Everybody <laughs> on the on the bridge is different. Is is Jeffrey Jones Spike character, but it's, he's dressed as Worf. He's dressed. The data data looked really good. Like it just looked like <laughs> data. Um, if it's just a person. Now, I want to bring this up. We, we we get a crash test dummies reference again. Oh yeah. And I just want to say, it, between the two movies. No wonder Flintstones and this, no wonder, and the toys. No wonder I thought as a kid, crash test dummies were part of pop culture legacy. And nobody cares about crash test dummies and never did, but I was just yeah. inundated with crash test dummies. I mean, I remember the toys and I remember a lot of people having them, but that was like a very like small sliver of time. It was like based on a commercial. Big for us too, because we were like, children, but like, yeah. yeah, it was, they had a cartoon show and everything. Yeah. Like it ran for like one season. And the I talked about this on the Flintstones episode, but I had a, v, like a VHS came with an action one of the action figures, and it was a new line of the action. Like it was there was the Crash Test Dummies from the cartoon and the CGI reboot like show where they introduced a bunch Didn't of know new that characters. <laughs> and but it was only the VHS with the like t- two episodes. I don't know if it ever yeah. became a show. And I'm being like, there's new characters for our. There's new dummies. There's new dummies. (laughs) They added a lady dummy. And they were better made. They didn't just. Oh man, so woke. You didn't open the. (laughs) There's a lady dummy. It's so woke, new dummies. Um. Anyway, the the next thing is a hockey game. The thing that I laughed at from this was the two refs punching each other. Yeah, I thought that was really good. Two refs fighting. Yeah. (laughs) I was giggling at that as well, but also very confused. (laughs) Like, what's going on? And then we see Roy in uh, like the 1950s, and then I'm going, I recognize this, and he just like turns to show a billboard that says um, <laughs> "Driving Over Miss Daisy," mm, and yeah. Spike oh, just runs right. over an old lady. Um, yeah. This is then the next one is the Three's Company, and I think that was actually uh, Suzanne Summers and the other woman from. I don't nope. actually know. Nope. It probably it wasn't looked, Suzanne it Summers. Very it. Uh, I was doing some like little research for it or whatever. It wasn't actually them, but it did look very. It looked close. a lot like them. Yeah. Um, that was very good. Then they go into like a D'Artagnan sort of Three Musketeers fencing world where they have their final showdown. I was wondering when they were gonna because it's like they're not gonna have fencing swords in this guy's house without having a weird sword fight. Chekhov's fence. Yeah. Is what I wrote down. Check or it's Chekhov's sword. Chekhov's well, a, a, sorry, Chekhov's foil. That's what a fence oh. was called. And then the great uh, "Start Me Up" um, Salt and Pepper video. That's a great song. I like. I was that also song. in the fencing club in university. Just really, so I did. I did fencing in. The, we had this summer day camp that I went to. You did um, saber fencing though? It's like a thicker sword. Yeah. With actual sabers. Did it light up? It wasn't a lightsaber. It was a saber. <laughs> saber. Was it a lifesaver? Yeah. They just <laughs> threw candy at each other. Uh, um, they managed to mute the movie from within the movie. Uh, yeah. From within the music video. Uh, they turn, he presses the off button, and that's how they escape. I feel like by the end of this movie, they were like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Cocaine. How do we get them out of this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just Cocaine invented off. most of these ideas. Um, yeah, and the dish just implodes, and that's it. The yeah, spike is stuck in the D'Artagnan universe. The dog from the Sidon bombs gets warped in there, holding him up in a chandelier, and Crowley cuts him down, assuming he's killed. Um, and then Royce, Roy, the new guy, takes over Hell or TV Hell or whatever, I guess. And I get he. It's not. There's no like side plot part of it where he's like i'm gonna make this place better it's like i'm gonna be worse so if anything yeah <clears throat> so yeah and then roy starts a fencing school and then during the credits and that's the end that's the end of the movie during the credits we get a series of of dumb the rejected ideas yeah. the rejected ideas <laughs> beverly hills uh six zero six 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 I love Lucifer. I think it was nine oh six six. Oh, it was nine oh six 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 for sure. I oh just, yeah, 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 yeah. Remembers yeah. Dyslex- dyslexia, but this way and that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Golden Ghouls. I got. I, I chuckled. I, I did too. I was like, ah, yes. I, I really, I laughed at lad at Murder She Likes. Yeah, me and Danny <laughs> yeah. fucking died. 
uh facts of life supports fine uh french prince of, prince of darkness would just be a great show uh unmarried with children that one was just like that would be a tough time <laughs> yeah and david dukes of hazard david duke i think is a either a legendary serial killer or a nope he is one of the founders of the modern day kkk <laughs> oh much worse yes <laughs> So that I, is when the, I saw that I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, I knew I needed maybe not Duke. that one, guys. Um, that was the last joke, and I even checked for a uh, for a post credits. So we got uh, a lot out of this movie. We did sort of just talk about video games yeah. for like a while there, but that's um, fine. That's what the viewers like. It's true. We we are on a video game platform um so let's get right to the final thoughts i'll go first since it was my pick this week um i don't have a lot to say that i didn't say within the episode it does this movie does sort of play into a lot of tropes that i enjoy i like to see a lot of different parodies i like to see a lot of like it's you know it's the ingenuity of ghostbusters like the big budget but small budget practical at the same time of a big of ghostbusters it's got a lot of like the UHF similar flair. It really reminded me a lot of um, how they just interstitialed channels. Reminded me of Rick and Morty, Deadpool. Um, the other thing that I said that I can't, it's escaping me. I can only only say four things. The fifth thing will send me straight to hell. Um, the movie looked fine, you know. The CGI was weirdly like fine, like it was st- dated but decent for the era. Yeah, I still can't. I I've been I've seen this movie over the last thirty years a hundred times, and I still can't. I don't know who it's for. I think it's for. I think it's specifically designed for a ten-year-old to accidentally see on an upper cable movie channel. Accidentally, it's like a fa- It's like a family movie like you need extreme it's a pg movie but you actually need parental guidance to explain things because i feel like a a, a 12 year old would look at the parent and be like what does that mean parents like i don't know either so i'm going to give it a three out of five and heavily 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 um steeped in nostalgia three out of five it didn't get anywhere near that on Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes. It sits around like 40%. But I think a three out of five is um, is fair for just how much of stuff in this movie works. Like it, like it's it's dumb, but if you're in the mood for a dumb comedy, there's a lot here. So yeah. Steve. Right, 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 right. Um this movie was watchable <laughs> for me, but uh, it's definitely not, uh, it didn't blow me away in terms of like, I can't wait to see how this goes. <laughs> um, I was, once it kind of gets some steam, um, once they get sucked into the, the television, it, it becomes a little more fun. The home but, alone of it all. The home, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The, uh, the beginning was like the opening was you know I, I would have liked to it have been more uh, ghostbusters y like it didn't really get me hyped <laughs> sort of thing um i did like that there was an air mystery but then that that mystery is removed immediately like within maybe five minutes <laughs> so yeah. there's not really like a series of reveals um it just kind of jumps right in uh it's fun when you can make it uh, a movie that's almost sort of like an anthology or it's like, like i said before it's just like a an eclectic selection of stuff that you get to throw characters into and like that can always be fun um but it can also be a little bit boring after a time where you're like okay they've, they've done like i like this one this one and this one but the rest of them i could have done without um I, when they get out the first time i would have been fine if the movie ended there <laughs> like i don't think i needed that whole end battle between the two of them um it just kind of felt like it went on a little bit too long but that said i i enjoyed the majority of it but there was you know it's it's difficult for me sometimes when i'm watching a movie that just feels like a series of events happening and there isn't like a real journey we're not going through a journey they're fighting the whole time there's no moment of like realization between the two of them really in the movie that like 
other than him rescuing her, I guess. But, but you know, they don't they don't really learn to work together. <laughs> the only thing they really do is push the house together. And then every other time it's like they're fending for themselves pretty much. Um, and the child actors were not great. I mean, the, the boy was OK, but he was, you know, Young spouting man, a lot yeah. of nonsense. <laughs> um i don't have a, a nostalgic connection to this movie at all today is the first time i have ever even heard of it really like i i went out of my way to not look at trailers and stuff because i'm like i want to just go in with no information on what this is um but yeah i think i will give this a nappy crappy <laughs> Ooh, nice. of, uh, a napper uh, crapper a napper crapper out of a uh of eternity watching Dwayne's world. <laughs> That's yeah. great. At least you don't have to leave your chair. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's funny, it's funny too, because I have another one of these movies from this era of my life. Um that I'm it, the next time that we do one of these movies, um <clears throat> I have a there's a movie that came out uh in the early 90s called high strung and it's like the first movie after jim carrey it's like it's jim carrey's not his first movie but it's his first movie when he when he started to get famous um and it's got the guy from um who made do you remember the videos that were like a face on a thumb they're all straight to vhs and it's got that guy. He was also in uh, the Kung Fu Way of the Fist movie. Pow. Kung, yeah, that dude. And uh, if, fucking the Fonz? No. Not the Fonz. He looks like him, but it's not him. No, Kung, Kung Pao Way of the Fist was this dumb, just dumb movie. The that guy I, got in, gets inserted into like an old Kung Fu movie. They just yeah. like superimpose him into like an old movie. But this movie High Strung is basically just this dude inner monologuing in his apartment and just like complaining. But Jim Carrey is in it. And anyway, I'm gonna th- I'm gonna hit you guys with that one in, in one of these instances again. It's good. I it's a good movie. I can't wait. I don't think I've heard of that one. It's a good movie and it's funny and it's <laughs> it's weird, but and it's Jim Carrey's like first like I'm a I'm a blockbuster star now. I was in the mask. Check out this sure. thing um earth was, girls are easier yeah earth girls are easier is his first movie but that that's like that's like before in living color anyway i digress um kaylin bring yours. us home well tell us tell us about it the so this was also my first time seeing it and also so didn't have the nostalgic value like attachment to it um i did enjoy it though it was it it the i did like you know the parodies the spoofs uh, the meta the it tying in with it it kind of like tied in a lot with this show like how they go through like different shows and stuff like that um there were some jokes here and there it, it was definitely worth a watch and uh i give it 666 channels but they're all the same show <laughs> Oh my god i can't tell if that's a good review or a bad review. <laughs> I, mean, I guess th- that's the ambiguity of it all yeah i don't know if a napper crapper is a good review either <laughs> <laughs> is it i don't know it's i guess it's better than a regular toilet it's over nine thousand. <laughs> that's true it was the napper crapper 9000 or was it the napper crapper 900 i guess we'll never find out because i will probably never watch this movie again um Ever? Well, maybe in you know in in this ten years, another another twenty years. years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, That said, I'm thank you guys for indulging me. Um, This is a this is definitely a birthday movie month or birthday month movie, but the nature of these these couple couple weeks this month this weird August do whatever we want month is just odds and sods. But it is. No, I mean, I again, like my review is not indicative of how I feel about the movie. I enjoyed it, and I'm glad I watched it. But yeah, it's not something I probably would have gone out of my way to seek. Yeah, 
Um, so we are off next week as I'm away, but the week after that, we are back with uh, Steve's pick or Kalen's pick. You guys each have picks. I can't, I remember. can't remember what I picked. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know. I've been trying to think of what I want to pick, and I think I know what I'm going to decide on. Sweet. But Steve, I'm pretty sure you're the next uh, next one up. Yeah, we will post about what it is when we know, because I can't remember if I chose something or not. I'll have to look at the list. Well, as always, I have to ask uh, for 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 Kalen and Stephen. I'm Jason. For Kalen, for Jason, my name is Stephen. And uh, for Jason and Stephen, I'm Kellen. And uh, as always, I have to ask a burning question that's in all of our hearts and all of our souls. It's, hey, did you see this one? Yeah, it's burning in my bladder. Hey, did you see this one? I got to pee. So do I. Hey. hey, did you see this one?